All right, everybody, thanks for sticking around. This is part two of the carburetor rebuild. Uh, I've got Roy here, who's an expert in carburetors. And uh, now we'll, uh, first step is we, we had the carburetor soak in the Berryman's cleaner. Uh, it soaked for, I don't know, about three or four days. Um, we got everything cleaned up. Now we got Roy back here to start the assembly. And uh, Roy, just want to hand it off to you. To okay, so the first thing I always do is this is the power valve cover, okay? And this is the accelerator pump cover. Now, if you notice how nice and shiny it is between the holes, okay? So what I had to do is I had to take it, put it on a piece of 220 sandpaper until I got it shiny all the way around between the holes. Because what happens is people torque these down a little too tight and then they warp between the bolt holes, all right? So now I'm gonna show you the accelerator pump, how it looks right now. Okay, so now we'll start the process on this. You can see a little bit how warped it is because it's nice and shiny at the bolt holes, but in between the bolt holes, it's still kind of dirty. Okay, so we're getting the high spots down so that everything looks like the other cover does. Okay, we're getting close. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken both of those and using sandpaper, I've been able to get all the high spots, which are the bolt holes, I've been able to get them taken care of by sanding it down so that everything is nice and smooth and square, flat, okay? Okay, so... I've got the top gasket, the, bolt, the air cleaner gasket, the base mounting gasket, they call it. Okay, those are out of the kit, so they're out of my way. The choke gaskets, out of my way. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with, we're gonna put this little umbrella here. I call it the umbrella. It goes in the accelerator pump. So when the accelerator pump, when you pump the gas, okay, this opens up and lets fuel in, okay? It keeps the fuel from going back into the bowl. Without it, you would be peeing in the wind, so to speak. <laughs> okay, we got the linkage somewhat straightened out. Somebody had wired it together and everything, and uh, as far as I remember, we didn't take anything off that in the first place, so we'll play, play with that when we get to the part reinstalling it. So, First thing I'm gonna do, take a piece of sandpaper and just clean this up a little bit. Make sure there's no gas material left on it. Remember earlier in the last episode, I was telling you about the power valve. What happens is when you accelerate, you, your vacuum basically drops down to two, two inches of vacuum, never any lower. That's as low as it can go, okay? But when you accelerate, it drops down and it opens this valve, okay? And what happens is if you look down inside here, you can see two brass jets, orifices. Okay? There they are. Those orifices are those two jets there in the bottom of the bowl. Okay, so what happens is the power valve actually lets gas right from the bowl, right into the intake manifold to, to go into a high performance mode where you're trying to accelerate up a hill, maybe trying to get going, maybe you're drag racing, okay? Power valve is real important when you're drag racing because you gotta have that extra gas to get you going. All right, so we're gonna put the power valve in here. Okay, takes 
care of that. And then we find the gasket for it, the cover. Whoa. So we've got the accelerator pump housing all cleaned up and leveled, flattened out, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to put this on. Install it like so. Now don't do this at home, okay? Because these carburetors are so old and brittle by the time that, that we get to it. The, the, the aluminum has probably, this has probably been rebuilt who knows how many times over the years uh, before it went into storage. Um, so if you use one of these drills and you get carried away, you can very easily strip these holes out. So I recommend doing it by, by hand, okay? I'm doing it because I've been doing this for years. It's not a problem, but a lot of people might, might, uh, cause themselves more uh, more heartache than anything okay so okay so now we got the accelerator pump, pump hooked up okay as you can see everything's working like it should get this fly out of my face <laughs> all right so next we're going to go with the venturi cluster okay so there's a little eighth inch check ball goes down in the bottom of the center hole there which is where to go which is what that check ball and then this little rod sits on top of it okay and what that does when you accelerate the pump pumps fuel up through this hole where this pin is sitting in the check ball okay and then put this gasket on and we set this down in there. Actually, we probably ought to put that on. There we go. Okay. And that. And then this gasket, okay, goes underneath the head of the center bolt that holds the venturi cluster in. If you look down here, there's two small bleeder holes, right? Right there. And right there, those are called air bleed holes, okay? So, and then if you look closer, you can see the two little brass nozzles right down here, okay? Those are actually your accelerated discharge nozzles. When you accelerate, the pump pumps fuel up through there, up through this bolt, and goes comes out here at the top. You can see on the bolt that it's stepped, and there's holes, two holes in the bolt, okay? So, okay, so I'm bolting the Venturi cluster in. Again, be very careful about this because these, these threads are probably just really, really weak now. So if you try to torque something down, you're probably going to strip it out and then it's junk. All right, so we got the Venturi cluster in, the check ball and the rod. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the needle and seat in. So we got the seat, that's what screws into the base of the car, into the body of the carburetor. So that goes down here like this. Make sure that's snug. Okay, then we've got the needle. And we've got a little clip that goes on the top of the needle. And that hooks on to the float. Okay, this is the float. And this needle goes on just like that. So that when the bowl goes low, the float tilts down and it pulls the needle up mechanically pulls it up so that fuel can get in, okay? 
So what we do is we set her down in there, and then we take a screwdriver and click it in around the needle seat. Okay, now comes the really, really most important part. The top of the float needs to be level with the top mating surface. Okay, so we gotta tweak it just a little bit. So we're gonna do that number. A little bit more. There we go. Okay, so now when the float level is full, the float's gonna come up here level with the top, where the top is mounted to, and that is where the float level should be at all times. Okay, so that takes care of that. So now what we'll do is we're gonna put these idle adjusting screws or jets in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw these in. Okay, now this is real important, so pay attention. You screw it in by finger, okay, just nice and easy. Okay, but you start turning this, you know, going against the spring, okay, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna turn these screws down to the point where it just stops, okay? Don't screw it any farther than that or you'll screw that jet up, okay, or the needle up. So we do the other one the same way. Okay, so they're both bottomed out now. So now comes the another real important procedure you back these jets out one and three quarter turn each okay and basically that's going to give you enough fuel for this engine to idle okay after the engine's warmed up then i'll show you how to adjust them to to maintain the the nice even running that it should do okay so there's half there's one there's half there's three quarters half, there's one, there's half, three quarters, okay? So now those are set. That's real important because when we start the engine up, if you remember in episode one, I explained to you that if you accelerate when it's cold and the accelerator pump isn't set up right and these jets aren't set up right, you could backfire. And if it backfires, you got to pull the carburetor back off and replace the power valve again, okay? that's You don't want to do that. Okay, so we've got the internals all put back together. So now we can put the top on. Kind of tricky to get everything lined up and get it set up right. carburetor the right way. <laughs> this is my first time, okay? <laughs> I thought so. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> You're the expert, so yeah, I didn't want to yeah, say that. Yeah, I'll, well. I'll let you figure it out. Now, if you're smart, you always try to get the bolts started, all the screws started before you tighten anything up. Okay, so we got everything started. Now we can tighten it up. OK, 
Okay. So the top's on. Now, two things. We can't finish the power valve because we don't have the right power valve. Okay, so we're not gonna be able to finish that today. And we can't finish it because the kit didn't come with the choke pull-off diaphragm. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll put the choke assembly on. <laughs> That's a bug spray. <laughs> I think <laughs> it might work. It might work. You never, you never know. Sometimes these screws are just so. Uh -oh. Okay. Okay, and that little linkage you retrieved, we definitely need that. That's what goes on the choke shaft. Okay, so we got everything there. So now, What's inside of there? Is that just, is there a spring in there or a coil? Inside of here? Yeah. Or this? Oh, there it is. That's, that's the what choke. I was looking yep. for. That's, yeah. that's the choke spring. Yep. It's actually called the choke thermostat is what that's called. Does that wind in there? Mm-hmm. There's a slot right here, a slit in this linkage right here, okay? Okay. And then if you look real close at this choke thermostat, you can see it's got a, an end, a twister, not an end, but a, a, a bend in it. And that bend has to go in that. There, so now we got it hooked up right, okay? So what we'll do is we'll put some Is there screws. tension on that? Right now there is, that's why it snaps shut. Got it, that's got why, it. That's why it snaps shut, okay? And all I want it to do, because right now it's what, probably 80 degrees? So it's pretty warm, so the choke really shouldn't slap shut like it would do in first thing in the morning. What happens is when you get in at first thing in the morning, you hit the gas a couple times, does two things. It allows the choke to snap shut, and it squirts a couple of squirts of gas, raw gas, right into the intake, which helps aid the engine in starting up in cold weather. Out here in California, as I said in the first episode, oops, um, you know, we really don't need to worry about the choke so much, but again, if it's 50 degrees out, if you don't set the choke, number one, um, you're probably going to have a hard time starting it. Even at 50 degrees, it's probably going to start hard. Cold engine, whether it's 50 degrees or even 60 or 70 degrees, needs that raw fuel to initially fire the engine because the engine itself is cold. I mean, it's, you know, it's metal, so it's going to be cold. So with the choke open like that, that's what it's going to look like when you, if you took the air cleaner off first thing in the morning, the choke's going to be partially closed, okay? Now you hit the gas a couple of times, the choke closes, two squirts of gas go into the intake, crank it over, as soon as you start cranking it over, the, the uh, choke butterfly will open up approximately a quarter of an inch, allowing air in. And that's what draws the fuel through the Venturis out of the bowl of the carburetor, and bang, the engine starts and runs. And then if you got everything set up right, it'll sit there and fast idle. You know, you can run it for you know two or three minutes fast idle, just tap the gas, 
and it might idle down a little bit more and you tap the gas again and it might go all the way off. Now it's at regular idle. I think that's as far as we can go today. Okay, so as, so as Roy has mentioned, um, the carburetor rebuild kit that we got is, uh, a couple of the parts are incorrect. Could you kind of explain, Roy, what exactly? So we got the GP Sorensen kit. Um, it, it was for a 74 Javelin with a, a two barrel carburetor, but there was a few things that were incorrect in the kit. Well, as you can see, here's the power valve, okay? It looks pretty good, except when you look at it, it's got a stepped up uh, area on it. And, it. and this one here is actually adjustable. The problem is the cover on the carburetor is flat to accommodate the original power valve. But with this sitting in here, cover doesn't fit okay so we need to get the right power valve to put back in this in the old days when I had all kinds of carburetor parts I would just go to my collection and I would find the cover that fits this because this power valve is all pretty cool because you can dial this in a little bit to get more power out of it but in this case we're not worried about that um, so that was wrong in the kit also the kit didn't come with the choke the choke pull-off diaphragm is connected here and when you start the engine it allows the, it that's what pulls the choke open about a quarter of an inch and lets the engine start because now it can draw air through the venturis and draw fuel out of out of the bowl of the carburetor but it didn't come with this diaphragm so we got to take care of that also the kit did not have the proper uh, base mounting gaskets for the carburetor to the intake so we're gonna have to order what we need there um, other than that you know the kit you know GP Sorensen's a good kit it just doesn't have everything you should have to rebuild a carburetor uh, especially when you go talk about power valve and the and the uh, choke butter for the choke pull-off these are you know detrimental to the operation of this carburetor but for some reason they fail to set you know set up sell them in the kit probably so they can make the kit more affordable, but then when you go to buy the power valve, probably gonna be 10 or $12. When you go to buy the new choke pull-off diaphragm, probably gonna be another 10 or $12. So that's their way of getting their money out of you. That's a good point, because I think I paid like $50 for that carburetor kit, so we would have probably had, you know, what, $80, $90 carburetor kit if it would have had everything in there. Yep. So that's a, that's a good observation there. So, at this point, ladies and gentlemen, that's as far as we can go. So we're gonna head over to the parts store and probably gonna, or maybe I'm gonna get online. Uh, either way, I'm either gonna go to the parts store, see what they got, or, or order some things, and uh, we'll get this thing put together. Appreciate you watching. Have a good one. Remember, old guys rule. <laughs>